United States. That's the president's latest idea to try to protect Americans from the coronavirus. This revealed in a tweet late yesterday. Tracy Potts has the latest. Shutting down immigration. President Trump says he'll sign an executive order, officials say early this week, to temporarily suspend immigration into the United States to protect jobs and Americans from the coronavirus. Senator Kamala Harris accuses him of shamelessly politicizing the pandemic. Travel was already banned from China and Europe. The northern border with Canada is closed, and migrants from the southern border are regularly being deported. This unexpected shutdown comes as Congress tries to add $310 billion for more small business loans. Overnight, we learn the Senate may take action this afternoon. Colleagues, it's past time past time to get this done for the country. The House is scrambling to get lawmakers back to Washington to vote Thursday morning. New York's Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez says she'll vote no because it's not enough money. I am not here for a $5 bill. I'm not. And I will not insult my community with one. As protests expand around the country. Let people go back to work. Please. It's time. Florida, Georgia, and South Carolina are reopening for business. This can be the beginning of the pathway back to normal life. And health experts remain concerned that's not safe. Not everybody believes we should do so much testing. You don't need so much. The federal government could be a lot more help if we're going to get the testing we need it. Only 1% of the U.S. population has been tested. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo is expected at the White House today for a face-to-face -face meeting with President Trump about how they're handling the massive number of cases in New York. Tracy Potts, NBC News. More coronavirus shutdown protests are expected today. One in Missouri's capital, Jefferson City, and another in Raleigh, North Carolina. Demonstrators are demanding governors reopen businesses so the economy can get back on track. Similar protests have been taking place across the country since last week, including one in Olympia on Sunday. Hundreds of Amazon warehouse employees today are expected to skip work to protest working conditions. They say the company isn't doing enough to protect them from coronavirus. Workers at more than 50 warehouses say they'll call out of work starting today and throughout the week. Looking at a map from workers' rights group United for Respect, that could include Amazon employees in Seattle and Kent. Amazon disputes the claims and says facilities have been sanitized, employees have masks and gloves, and the company is even taking workers' temperatures when they report for their shift. Mimi, the number of coronavirus cases among the homeless is growing. Seattle King County Public Health announced 112 confirmed cases in people who are homeless or working in homeless services. At least two other people have died, including a man who was living in isolation in Kent, a facility there. The medical examiner will ultimately determine how he died, but we do know he did have COVID-19. And this morning, we're hearing a stark new warning from the World Health Organization the worst of the pandemic may still be ahead of us. It's a virus that many people still don't understand. Many countries were very developed, putting the wrong conclusions because they didn't know it and got into trouble. The World Health Organization warns all countries must do three things to combat the virus. Test, isolate, and care for every case and of course trace every contact. Maybe. Renton is one step closer to bringing a coronavirus vaccine production facility to the city. Last night, the city council voted on a resolution which authorizes the mayor and other officials to work on doing just that. The city points out it's already a manufacturing hub with a well-trained workforce and home to Boeing 737 plant and truck maker Packard. Thousands of Boeing employees are now back at work after operations were suspended due to the coronavirus outbreak. The company says it will protect these workers from coronavirus by staggering shifts, so not everyone arrives and leaves at the same time. But some workers say it is too early to be back and fear these protective measures will not be enough to keep them from getting sick. I've talked to a lot of my co-workers and there, most of them are uh, pretty apprehensive thinking it might be a little bit too soon. It's not in the guidelines of the uh, state and the Governor Inslee's stay-at-home order yet, and we're all, kind of, we're all pretty nervous about it. 
At least 30 Boeing workers have tested positive for coronavirus and one worker has died. The workers' unions will be watching the situation very closely over the coming days to make sure no one else is getting sick. A landlord who allegedly ignored Washington State's new moratorium on evictions is in for a legal battle. The Attorney General's office has now announced they've filed the first lawsuit since the eviction moratorium went into place. The AG is suing JRK Residential. It's a Nevada-based property management company and operates at least four apartment complexes in Pierce, Nahomish, and King Counties. And it's accused of threatening at least 14 residents at the boulders at Puget Sound and Tacoma with notices to pay or vacate. Officials say management was aware of the no evictions law and still gave just 14 days for tenants to pay. From our standpoint, though, the pattern of unlawful conduct over so many weeks is so egregious that we need to hold them accountable for that. They've put these tenants through so much stress and strain. Um, it's really, un, you know, it's unconscionable what they did and they need to be held accountable for it. The statewide eviction uh, moratorium lasts through June 4th. The AG says more than 650 complaints have been filed so far. Final report cards will look much different this year for students in Seattle. The school district announced a new grading policy. Students will either get an A or an incomplete. The district says it considered several options, but thought this was the best for students finishing the school year at home. Washington schools have been closed for 40 days now, and we've been hearing a lot of you uh, who are trying to figure out remote learning. The unprecedented move to shut down all schools in Washington to stop the spread of the virus presented a huge a unique challenge. How do you educate more than a million students remotely? As it stands, there's no daily count of how many students are participating and districts are still looking for guidance on grading. Have the teachers told you that they're not grading anything? Uh, a few or? of my teachers, like some of them say that it's just feedback that they're going to give us, but that's it. Now, each district is doing their own thing. Some are using paper packets, others are connecting through Chromebooks, and Seattle Public Schools is even using public television. I mean, we have a wonderful new update about that Vancouver mother who delivered her baby while in a COVID-19 coma. Angela Primachenko got to take her newborn daughter, Ava, home over the weekend. Ava was in the NICU because she was born six weeks premature. The family also got an adorable video of a big sister, Emily, meeting Ava. There's a smile. Hi. Say hello. Wow. Good. Hello, come home. I got sister. <laughs> oh, those are great moments. Angela is no longer COVID-19 positive, by the way, and baby Ava has tested negative, as did the rest of the family. Very cool. Well, a pop-up parade in Tacoma helped make a boy's birthday a little brighter. Police say they were contacted by the boy's dad, who is stuck out of the country because of new travel restrictions. He said his son loves police and loves police cars. So during a shift change, Tacoma police officers swung by the boy's house and gave the young man a birthday wave.